I'm really excited about this project. My last video where I made the clear epoxy skulls with the wood brains to go inside got me really excited about making silicone mold making. So I've teamed back up with my good friends over at BB Dino to use their platinum silicone as well as my good friends over at Total Boat to use their thick set clear casting epoxy. Without further ado, let's get into the project. I found this set of tools on Amazon for a little over $20. I figured it was perfect for being able to make our silicone molds of each one of the different tools. Then we'll cast epoxy in each one of the molds, giving us a crystal clear tool. I'm really excited about this. So let's go ahead and make some molds for these, put them in the pressure pot, and then we'll cast some epoxy. I got this set of uh, screw assortments at Harbor Freight. It's multiple different size and heights. I'm using these to just offset the tool while I'm making the mold and then that'll be the area that the epoxy is gonna pour inside. Okay, first mold made. I did something different this time where I just, instead of making a full box where there would've been all of this wasted space and wasted material, I'm also even thinking about putting in a piece right here so that I'm just using the least amount of silicone needed for making this mold. We're off to a good start. Let's mix up some silicone. So I finally have my own air compressor, thanks to Ryobi for sending me over their 18 volt cordless air compressor. I need a compressor to make the pressure pot work. I was borrowing my friend Zyla's air compressor for way longer than I'd like to admit, but I finally gave it back to her and now I have my own, thanks to Ryobi. Let's hook it up to the pressure pot to make our mold. Okay, so the hammer mold is in the pressure pot. It's gonna sit for four hours, so while we wait, I'm gonna make all the other tool molds and get them ready so that we can just repeat the process. Then we'll move forward with epoxy. All right, I have a few molds made. I'm excited about how these have turned out. I wanna do this tape measure, but that means I need to disassemble it and make it in a couple different pieces as well as uh, doing the level. So these ones I'm gonna do in a couple pieces. I'm gonna take it apart and then salvage what I can, hold on to the pieces on the inside and then make uh, molds of just these outer plastic pieces. All right, these molds are all prepped and ready for silicone to be poured in them. I did pull out the hammer from the pressure pot and had a little extra when I mixed it up, so I poured two wrenches. But next, I need to do a set of pliers to finish off this set. The pliers that came with this set, however, I wanna be able to actually functionally use the pliers. So I need to be able to take them apart and make a mold of two pieces. And I think that's gonna be a little bit hard with this set. So I picked up a set from Harbor Freight and this will be a lot easier because I can take the uh, nut and bolt off and I can separate the two of these and then make a mold of both pieces. That way it can be a functioning set of pliers made of epoxy. So let's uh, take these two sets of pliers apart and then make molds of these and then we're done mold making and we're on to finishing off this project. That's definitely the most amount of silicone molds I've made at one time. All right, now it's time to uh, pull them out of the uh, foam core, demold them, and get ready to pour some epoxy. Another Amazon find. Okay, while we wait for the first round of epoxy tools to cure in the pressure pot, I kind of want to make a fun little toolbox to hold all of the uh, clear epoxy tools, but we also gotta make it out of epoxy. So let's open up this little Junior Stanley toolkit and see what we can use to make a mold to make a little clear toolbox to hold our clear tools. Okay, I'm gonna make silicone molds of all three of these pieces to make the toolbox. I've given them a nice clear coat with this Rust-Oleum clear coat. I know that there's an easier way to do this and I could probably cut it out on my CNC out of plexiglass. I really wanna challenge myself to make this entire thing out of epoxy. So uh, without further ado, let's experiment. Okay, here's the silicone mold for the toolbox. We have our three parts. I'm gonna use a little uh, mold release, fill it with epoxy, put it in the pressure pot, and we'll see if this works. I also cut a board out to put in the bottom of the pressure pot, and I made sure that it was nice and level, so when we add the mold in, it'll be nice and flush, and I'm gonna actually pour it in the pressure pot. That way I'm not transferring it, and I don't uh, run into any issues of spilling it. So now that I know that that's level and flush, let's fill it with epoxy. Okay, let's demold the hammer. I mean, not bad. Small air bubble right there, right there, and right there. But I can, 
I can be happy with that. I can fill that with UV resin. I mean, that is a, oh, so pretty. Crystal clear, it looks so good. A little bit of flashing. Clean that all up. I made an epoxy hammer. Oh, it looks so good. Yes. Okay, let's demold the uh, screwdriver and hope we had just as good of a success. Oh, the handle looks really good. Oh, it looks so good. Yes. Another successful casting. Okay, I'm happy with how the first screwdriver turned out, but I wanted to see a crystal clear version. So I coated the original handle of the screwdriver in epoxy, let it fully cure, and then I made another silicone mold. So that way the reference of the next mold was crystal clear as opposed to matte, giving me two different versions of screwdrivers. They both work extremely well and hold the screwdriver bits in the end tip. They look great. Now let's uh, demold a couple more epoxy tools. These little wrenches were probably the easiest to cast and to break out of the mold. They came out so nice. I love that you can see that it says drop forged steel. And then on the other side, you can see the measurement. They just, they turned out great. I cut a portion of the tool case out to make a little holder and I made a silicone mold of that as well. That way they popped in here nicely and just held in place. That way I could display it in the toolbox itself without them falling over. They just look so great. I was really excited about how these turned out and how well these casted. Okay, I'm excited on how the little nut and bolt for the plier turned out. This little channel here allows it to get bigger or smaller. Put the bolt through here. Locker in place. Epoxy pliers to tighten that, that bolt. Perfect. Now let's assemble one of these. The threads came out so nice on these little screws. I'll use my uh, 3 8 inch wrench to tighten this guy down. Nice. There we go. A functioning set of pliers, adjustable to size, two different sets. These are so great, I'm so happy with these. Okay, moving right along. The little set of Allen hex keys really took a minute to get them all individually to come out of the mold perfectly, but I finally got a good set. I also made this little holder so that I could actually hold them all together and display them nicely in the toolbox. It's really impressive on how crystal clear these are. The silicone mold was even able to pick up all the little markings on the holder itself. The 730 seconds. You can even see the 730 seconds on the actual holder to correlate with which one goes in where. I'm really impressed with how this set turned out. Okay, time to see if the tape measure turned out. Easy does it. Oh, I got it! Finally! This piece right here on the back has been the part that keeps breaking. Ugh! Stoked on it. Okay, let's see if the next piece comes out just as easy. Oh my gosh, this makes me so happy. I finally got two perfect pieces. 
Oh, it looks so good. And once the tape measure piece is inside it, just need to cut off these pieces, buff it out a little. Oh my gosh, that makes me so happy. Now we just gotta get the level finished up and then I've mastered all of the tools, making them into clear epoxy. Let's reassemble the tape measure with the uh, tape measure components. And there it is. Not bad. And it's good and functioning. Side button works. Clip on the side from that to that. Okay, finally got the bright idea to keep this thing completely stable and held together without putting clamps on it. Put two pieces of wood, rubber banded it together, which gave it stability all the way around so that it kept it straight and flat. So uh, let's see if it worked out. Oh my gosh, it's perfect. It's like perfect, perfect. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh, that makes me so happy. This is exactly what I wanted to see, a clear epoxy level. Oh, it looks so good. Oh, that makes me so happy. All three pieces came out great. Well, it took a little bit of experimenting and trial and error to go from this to this, as you can see, but I'm extremely stoked and proud of how this clear epoxy level turned out. It's functioning, it looks great. Now let's finish it off by putting the full tool set together. Another round out of the pressure pot. This is another side to the toolbox. These came out really good. Excited to assemble this and see how it turns out. A little bit of rock to it. Much better though. This was the first one. Second one much better. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, I'm gonna experiment with the assembly of this epoxy toolbox. I already have another one in the pressure pot. Originally, I was gonna make little epoxy dowels. That's why I left the holes open on the side for assembly. But I think what I'm gonna do for this one, just to see if it works, I'm gonna use some CA glue and I'm gonna tape it together. And then at the bottom, I'm gonna tape off the bottom and do an epoxy pour for the bottom section. If that doesn't work, then we'll go to plan B. Okay. Looks good so far. There are a couple of spots at the bottom where the tape bubbled up, which might mean that the bottom is not gonna be completely flush. But let's, uh, let's untape it and see how it turns out. There we go. I mean, yeah, it's not the best. So I'm not super happy with how the first experimental toolbox, the bottom turned out. I think I'm gonna go the route of making a piece of uh, epoxy to fit into that groove instead and then assemble it that way. So I've made up a mold um, for the bottom piece with silicone. So uh, let's give this another shot. Cool, cool, cool. Just sand the edges up a little bit and, uh, and then we'll construct this toolbox. Okay, it's time to assemble the second toolbox with the flat epoxy bottom. I think this is definitely the way to go. It fits nicely in the channel. So uh, let's glue it all together. Oh, I am so happy with how this turned out. The 2.0 version with the uh, epoxy bottom that's been made from the silicone mold was the way to go. It fits nicely in that channel and it helped just construct the whole thing all together. Nice, it's nice and sturdy and solid. Now let's fill it up with some epoxy tools and finish up this video.
Well friends, there it is, an entire set of clear epoxy tools and an epoxy toolbox to house the set. I am so beyond happy and proud of how this turned out. As I've said throughout this entire video, this makes me just so happy. I've wanted to do this for quite some time, so having the opportunity to be able to make this set and see it come out as well as it did makes me just so proud. I know this isn't something that you would do on a normal basis to have a clear epoxy tool set, but something for me to see that I could challenge myself to actually make this and have the results come out as perfect as they did makes me just so beyond proud. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I have a huge shout out to give to BB Dino for sending me their premium silicone, as well as to Ryobi for sending me their 18 volt battery operated compressor. And always a huge shout out to my friends over at Total Boat who are a huge supporter of my channel. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and until next time friends, when we do something fun, weird, or creative together.